Welcome back. So on our first test, we set up three 355 watt solar panels in parallel, ran them into our Anchor 3800 with one additional battery, and we tried to power our fridge for a week. We came up way short, but we had really bad weather all week, and we wanted to get a better idea of how it would perform with clear conditions. I know bad weather is part of the game, and that's something you gotta factor for, so that was a good learning experience, but we wanted to run it back one time and see just how the anchor could do under better conditions. Okay, October 13th, almost lunchtime. Not a cloud in sight. So, we're gonna get this going again, hopefully with some better results. We are gonna flip the anchor to run the fridge. And just in case any of you are interested in what that looks like, I'll show you. So we're at 100%. First thing we're gonna do is turn on the inverter. Hear the click. There we go. Come over here to our sub panel. It's already plugged in. Refrigerator, circuit A. There's circuit A. It's currently online, which is the power. We want to flip up to Gen. Now, we should be powering the fridge. There's our output. All right, round two, let's go. And if you're like me and super impatient, you want to see what your panels are doing all the time. And that's where I use the Anchor app to check my status. One day later, our shorter cable, the EcoFlow cable, actually showed up. Looks like it's gonna do the job. Our power station made it up to 91% with the sun today, so that's better than it's been doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap out this chaos for something a little bit cleaner. That is not perfect, but it's very close to perfect. It looks a lot better than that. Big old jumbled mess being up there. Plus that frees that up to actually be used as an extension cord if I run the generator. So yeah, overall, pretty happy with the EcoFlow cable. Wednesday morning, 6.55 a.m. So nearly 48 hours in, 60%. Everything's running well. Got the new cord on there. It looks a lot better, that's for sure. Close that up. Yeah, we'll see. We'll probably get down to about 55 before the sun comes up and uh, we'll see how much we can get into the battery today. It's a beautiful, sunny, very few clouds in the sky. Florida afternoon, heading about 11.30. So we've been running the anchor now since Monday this time, so four days and with the update and lower idle consumption and just clearer skies it seems to be doing better than last time so let's see tail of the tape all right 41 percent 640 coming in we're peaking closer to 900 watts when the sun is in a good spot so uh we'll see as long as we get up to at least 40% in the evenings, we have enough to make it through the night. So it doesn't seem like it can run forever on just the three panels, but um, it's definitely much improved. So two hours later, 11.30 is when we started this morning, checking our time and our consumption. About 1.30 now, sun is straight over us. We're getting premium sun. So let's see what that translates to. We were at 40, 41% earlier. It's only been two hours, you know, so you can only expect so much. But for inquiring minds, in two hours, while still running, the fridge, we were able to pick up about 10%. So that's pretty good. It's definitely not gonna get us to full before sunset, but because you can see right here at 746, it's still taking about eight additional hours of sun, which we just don't have. So 
we can see that this single string of three panels is, is not enough to indefinitely run the fridge, but it should get us through about a week. We'll continue to run the test to see just how long we can survive, but uh, it's pretty clear that we're not gonna be able to make it indefinitely on the current setup. All right, we are fresh out of sun on day four. Got the helper junior with us. Hey, buddy. So, let's see what we got to take us through the evening. 60%. All right, well, we know it's taken us about 30 to 33% to get through the night. So we will make it through the night for sure. Probably charge back up to about 50 tomorrow. I'm guessing if we have good sun. And since it's Thursday, we should be running out by Saturday. We shall see. Good morning. Welcome to Friday. We started on Monday. It's uh, about 10 a.m. We're starting to get some sun on the panels. And we're down to 24%. So we were at 60 last night. I'm hoping to get up to 50% today. If we're able to get up to 50% at least today uh, by sunset, we should be able to make it another day and roll into Sunday. And that's probably where we'll run out of power. I'll keep you posted. All right, back with our helper junior, the sand hill cranes. We uh, got all the sun we're gonna get for the day. It's about 7.30 p.m. Friday night. This is really all we got. We got 42, so we should make it to sunrise. I guess theoretically be able to run all day tomorrow, Saturday and then probably run out late Saturday evening. So that's what I'm expecting. We'll see how much sun we can get tomorrow. Birds chirping, sun's coming up. Well, we got a ways to go before anything makes it to our solar panels. Have kind of like the spooky movie mist over the ground. Um, so it's Saturday, a little after 7, and um, we're at 9% on the anchor. And I'm guessing we need three or four more hours before the sun is doing anything for us. So I'm going to share a little clip of the anchor app so you can see how I track it without having to go in the garage. We got down to the danger zone on this one. You hate to see 10% or less because you know you're working with limited time. And as you can see, the actual expansion battery draws first. So it is actually at a lower state of charge than the power station, which gives us an overall 10%. We live to fight another day. Sun's hitting all the panels. Gonna get some juice back in the anchor. I've been taking screen recordings of the Anchor app to try to work into this video. Hopefully my wife uh, can figure out a way to insert it. She's definitely smarter than me, so the odds are good. We got down really low and the battery actually drains a little bit faster than the main unit. So it was kind of sketchy, but we made it. So it's Saturday, we're, we're thriving. We should be able to run through the day as long as we don't get any crazy clouds. Uh, but then probably tonight, that's going to be it. Sandhill Hill Greens and the Rottweilers don't seem to get along today. Okay, Saturday evening, sun is going down. So we started to use exclusively uh, battery power. Let's see what? Oof. Yeah. Definitely not going to make it through the night, but uh, we'll see. I'll probably run it till I go to bed and then cut it off there. So 
basically Monday morning or Monday afternoon, about lunchtime, I think it was like 1130, or we'll call it 12 until probably 12 p.m. tonight, Saturday night. That's what it's looking like. Okay, I stayed up as long as I can for this. It's 1.32 going into Sunday morning. And we are just about done. We have uh, enough juice to get us anywhere from four to eight hours, depending when it cycles, it can go up to over 300. So you can't really trust that eight and a half hours remaining. Either way, it's not gonna be enough to get us to the sunrise. So we're gonna call it here, switch back over to grid power, and uh, might as well just show you what that looks like. So whenever you switch inside the sub panel to generator power, it automatically trips the house circuit. So I have to come back over here, switch this to off. Then I can reset the circuit for the fridge. Now that should be good. And let's just check, make sure the fridge is working. Cause that would suck to go to bed and wake up to uh, nothing. Okay, fridge is actually off. So what's going on? Ah, I left it on off. Got to come all the way down to the line. Now nah, it should be good. And that's why we checked because it's late and uh, things happen. Looking for that light. Oh yeah. All right, so now we're good. We're back on grid power. Uh, tomorrow. We'll charge up with solar, and I need to break out the large generator and run that for its monthly uh, cycle just to keep it operational. So I'll plug in here, uh, charge this up a little bit along with some solar, and uh, we'll get ready for the next chapter. Okay, so after another week, what did we learn? Well, 1100 watts of solar, at least in this configuration, even in Florida, just isn't enough for our fridge. To run indefinitely at least it'll definitely get you through a tight spot and it'll last for a while in an emergency and realistically we might have made it sunday morning we, we might have gone without power for about an hour but then once the sun hit the panels we probably would have been back up and we could have kept going and probably limped along that way for quite a while if we had to we could also ration it by turning it off for a little bit uh, while everything was cool and you know, conserve some power while it was charging. So there's there's a lot of options for something like this to get you through a very long time. It's not really what we're after. What we're hoping for is the ability to kind of plug it in and forget about it. What we're doing now is we've split it up. We've added an additional panel. So we have 1400 watts, but what we did was split it into two sets of two. So by doing that, we're gonna reduce our voltage drop um, since we have a hundred foot of MC4 10 gauge wire, uh, according to the calculator online, we were somewhere around 15 to 16% uh, voltage drop, which is not very good at all, really. But in lieu of switching to a more expensive eight gauge wire for everything, we went ahead and switched into two sets of two, still using the 10 gauge. And that brought us down, at least according to the calculator, quite a bit, about 9%. So. That's doable. Uh, we're recording that now, and we'll share with you guys uh, once we have another week's worth of results. So appreciate you hanging out and uh, learning with us. And if we were helpful at all, or you just enjoyed laughing at my blunders, uh, feel free to like and subscribe. Thanks.